Well, I started out racing motorcycles at the age of about 14. Um, I'm a South African champion, ex South African champion, a Springbok. I was involved in a lot of world championships. Rode for my country three times in six days. And basically just built up my experience with motorcycles from riding and working on my own bikes. And then eventually became very interested in suspension and had the opportunity to go to Austria to work at KTM in Austria doing development of suspension. I actually started out there doing motor training and doing all the technical side of motors, training importers on how to strip and rebuild motors. And that branched off into the suspension division, which was my main passion, so to speak. And at KTM, we started a new department for WP suspension at that time, which I founded with a very good friend of mine who was basically a guru in suspension. His name was Henrik Nolting. And together we built up that department to aid WP in development and to bring the suspension more in-house. Because most of the work was sent out before and testing was done through KTM but with external technicians. So by doing that we brought it all a bit closer to KTM and Austria and managed to develop a very, very good department there. Um, yeah, from there basically I was involved in a lot of testing, a lot of, of pre-production bike development, building of prototypes. Um, yeah, I left off by designing a fork, um, which I did sort of in my own free time. It was almost against their will because they were quite sticky about, about someone who wasn't the, the top boss making new ideas or creating new ideas. And, and in my free time, I designed a fork which landed up in one test rider's bike. And that was in about 2007. And in 2009, that became the production fork, and it's still being used today on the XCWs. So I was quite happy that, that my development I did on the side actually ended up being part of, of, of KTM's program and being a, a main part of the, the whole development of the bikes. You know? so, so that was a, a main highlight there. Another good part about working there was opportunity to work with really top riders. I mean, the kind of feedback we get from those riders is incredible. And, and to be out in the field nearly every week with riders doing settings and building suspension, you really get an idea of what's going on and what's right. And there's so many intricacies involved. You know, you learn that it's not just a fork and a shock, it's a whole motorcycle that combines with chassis, motor characteristics, everything to develop a package that works. If you have a loose engine mount, you know, oh, really? it has an effect on the suspension. If you change the silencer on a bike, it has an effect on the handling. And, and I mean, the craziest things you would never expect. And, you know, we even had experiments with, with leaving off the top engine brace to see if we create more comfort or changing the dimensions of the, the, the rod between the two triple clamps, machining it in a different contour. And, you know, sometimes the results are outstanding. Just by adding flex or taking away flex in certain areas of the bike's frame, just it had a major effect on suspension and on handling. And you kind of learn, you know, in the end that the bike that comes out is a sum of all the parts. And, and we worked all together, the chassis guys, the suspension guys, the engine guys, to create a final package, you know. And that, whereas a, a bike, you know, as it comes out, sometimes it's really good. It just needs to be set up a little bit better. And, maybe some attention paid to, to some of the details and you know you've got a good package instead of spending a fortune on, on modifying and changing and so that that's that's kind of one of the things that's most interesting to the average rider out there i mean uh, you know for the for the for the weekend warrior or from the, for the casual racer what is probably the most important thing you, you need to do or need to think about when you when you talk suspension i mean basically the, the most critical part is, is to get the springs right. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, the springs are, are the sort of the base of the suspension. They have to be suitable for your weight. And once you got that right, you know, then you can start doing fine tuning on the damping and stuff. But you know, the, the springs are actually the major component of, of suspension, and, and the damping is just a way to remove that spring energy and to control the energy within the springs. So if you don't have the right springs, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you can play around with what we call the damping as much as you want, but you're not going to come to a good result. So if you weigh sort of more than 85 kilos, you know, the average bike's made for a guy up to 85 from say 75 to 85 kilograms. So if you're more than 85 or 80, 
eight, say, kilos, you know, you need to start changing springs. If you don't do that, you, you can turn as many adjustments as you want and set as many things, but you're not going to get to where you want to be. You know? So, I mean, that's kind of the fundamental rule, is, is first sort out your springs. And obviously, you know, the bikes are made for different purposes. I mean, that's something here is quite important because a lot of guys here take motocross bikes and use them for enduro. Yeah. And, and there, there are differences within the damping. So if you're going to take a bike and use it for other than its intended purpose, you're going to need to change things, you know. And I think there's an art to doing that. Mm. And that's, you can really go wrong if you don't know what to do there, you know. I mean, that's kind of where I think understanding the whole bike as a package is what's so important because if you don't make the right changes, you know, you're going to create, I don't know what I want to say, you're going to create a, a dangerous handling motorbike instead of improving on it, you know? Yeah, uh, I know this is probably a loaded question, but uh, when you test ride a motorbike, what exactly are you looking for? Um, is, is that something you can explain or not really? It's difficult. Eh? I mean, you know, I, I've worked with some of the best riders in the world overseas and you get some guys who absolutely know feeling really and they rely solely on, on a suspension technician like myself to put them in the right direction and yeah obviously they get an idea if it's completely off but they don't really understand what they're feeling. They get on the bike, they ride and they just adapt to, to how it works and actually the, the good riders are incredibly good at, at like changing their riding position or adapting to bad suspension by, by just altering their riding style a bit hmm. and many times very good riders actually don't even make good test riders you know i found often that i can take a top rider and, and he's a disaster as a test rider and i mean the reason you know that is because often you try and trick him by doing something on the bike which he doesn't see and it, maybe you don't do anything actually and then send him out again and he comes back and says no it's completely different and it's like this but meanwhile you know that you didn't change anything and you, you completely can get the feeling that he doesn't know. And yeah. then there are other guys who, who you can change sort of two clicks on the clickers and they come back and say, oh, it's slightly harder. And, and you know that they 100% understand what's going on. And you try to find those, those guys to test with. And yeah. I mean, I worked with Solomon in you yeah. are, who basically is the best in your ride in the world. Um, who else was I with? Rupi Walkner was a top motocrosser and he was my main test rider for KTM. Rupi was, was an employee with KTM for many years and, and purely a test rider. David Knight I've helped a bit, um, Cyril Dupre a little bit. Oh, the guys do have personal preferences, you know, it's definitely, you know, some guys like more comfort, some like stiffer, safer suspension. I mean Giovanni Sala, he's 17 times Italian champion, I worked with him a lot. And I mean, Giovanni was, was a beast on the bike, you know, you, you could put in so much damping and hard springs and he just wants to know that he can hit things as hard as he can and it must be safe, you know, and he, he doesn't give a damn about comfort, you know, if he's riding on rocks he doesn't care about comfort, he just wants to be safe. The thing is with production bikes, I think we find often a happy medium, you know, we've got to find a setting that is working for those guys and working for a hobby rider and that's where it gets really complicated. Mm. And I think that's, that's the, the trick, you know, is to find something which can suit everybody. It's got to, I mean, as a, as a top technician, one of the crucial factors is it's got to be safe to you, you know. I mean, that's, we can't make it that soft that it's going to be super comfortable, but then if you hit something hard, you know, you're going to go down. And so you have a certain responsibility, too, to the riders that, that you keep within certain parameters of safety as well, you know.